Dear brothers and sisters, praise the Lord! It's time to read the Bible again. This week we are reading John chapter sixteen, starting from verse one. Before we get into today's scriptures, we are going to have a brief review of the past few chapters first. Chapter thirteen recorded Jesus' last supper with his disciples, while he's still on earth. The other three gospel books. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all recorded that Jesus changed the Passover supper to the Lord's supper. That is the origin of the Lord's table we have today. Only John did not record this in the Gospel book of John. On the contrary, he recorded the matter of Jesus wash his disciples' feet before the supper. And the new commandment he gave to his disciples during the supper, that they shall love one another. After Judas left, all other three gospel books recorded Jesus's experience in the Garden of Gethsemane, and his prayers to the Father. Right after the supper, only John used the length of four chapters from chapter fourteen to seventeen to record the words Jesus spoke to his disciples, his departing words to his disciples. John's record in these four chapters should come from his meditation on Jesus' word for sixty years. Plus the experiences he had from serving the churches, he realized that the departing words Jesus spoke to them were full of revelations and truths. We truly need to thank John who wrote this down. Chapter fourteen recorded after the Last Supper, while they were still in Mark's house, the upper room. Jesus told his disciples that he's going to the Father to to prepare the place for them, so the Triune God and man can mutual indwelling in each other. And the mutual indwelling's reality had to be through the sending of the Comforter, who is the Spirit of Truth by the Father. Then, chapter fifteen, he took his disciples out of Mark's house and went on the way to Gethsemane. He knew that his disciples did not truly understand the mystery of the mutual indwelling of God and man. So he used the surrounding thing, the vine they saw, and revealed to them the reality of the mutual indwelling of God and man through the example of the vine. He declared that he is the true vine, and the disciples are the branches. And the reality of the vine actually is the Christ and the church. Here we see the mutual indwelling of the God and man is an ongoing and growing status. It's totally organic, and it's a relationship of life. Even though we cannot fully understand, we can experience. This chapter also mentioned that he will send the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, come to testify for him. Then we come to chapter sixteen. Here we see the summary of Jesus' departing words to his disciples. Jesus knew that what he had said to them were very profound, and they are difficult. For men to understand, even two thousand years later, we have the reality of the indwelling Holy Spirit. They are still so not so easy to understand to us when we read them today. Let alone the disciples back then. Therefore, Jesus patiently explained to them again in another way. But the same principles. These principles we saw we saw them in the past three chapters already. First principle: Jesus has to go. That is, Jesus had to go through death. Second, his going is for his coming again. Who will come? That is, after he died and resurrected and ascended to heaven, he and the Father will send the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, to us. 
the Holy Spirit comes and will bring us the reality of all the riches of the Spirit. So it brings out the third principle: the Holy Spirit comes and He brought us the indwelling of God and man, even the mutual indwelling of God and man. This experience is mysterious, but it's the reality of the true vine. Therefore, in chapter sixteen, Jesus. Gave them further revelation about the work of the Holy Spirit. Let's read verse one. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. These things refer to the things recorded in chapter fifteen, verses eighteen to twenty-seven, when Jesus talked to his disciples about the relationship between the branches and the world. The world included the. Um, the politics in Rome, the ph- philosophy of Greeks, and the Jewish religions. This world is under the ruler of this world, who is Satan. So this world hated our Lord Jesus without any reason, and this world would also hated the disciples. Without any reason, because they did not belong to the world, they had been chosen by the Lord. Jesus' disciples and all those who truly wants to follow Jesus two thousand years later, they will all be persecuted by the world without any reason. So Jesus told them, "These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be stumbled over them." Jesus told us in advance does not mean that these things will not happen to us. They will still be there, but we have the word of God. His word gives us the power of stabi- stability and causes us to know that He is in control. His word can strengthen our faith, so we can stand. Then in verse two, Jesus told them what the world will do to them. Verse two: They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. The most service, the most severe persecution will not come. F- Will not come from Rome's politics or Greek's philosophy, but from the religious. Including the Jewish religions represented by the Jewish synagogues, Jesus told them that they would be put out of the synagogues, as recorded in the Book of Acts. We see that the power of the synagogues had always been the source of annoyance for the early churches, and the time will come that whoever kills them will think they are serving God. So religion. Religions did not stop just in the Jewish synagogues. After that, the time will come when the church will gradually be established, just as what Jesus said in Matthew chapter thirteen, the development of the kingdom of heaven. On the surface, there will be some development of defor- deformities, so that religions. Also entered into the church, even to a state that those fully, truly, those true followers of the of the Lord would be killed, and those who killed them thought they were doing God a service. Dear brothers and sisters, we must know to follow the Lord is a path of life, a path of. Revelation. We cannot follow the Lord under the religious ideology or religious sentiment. The relationship we have with God has to be a relationship of life. If we look at the church history for the past two thousand years, we'll see those true followers of the Lord oftentimes were the ones who were persecuted by the so-called the Exodus Church. In the church history, every recovered of the Bible truth was through the blood of the martyrs. Therefore, if we are the true follower,、uh, we if we are to truly follow the Lord, we need to prepare ourselves to suffer. For Jesus had told us about these things. 
verse three. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. When men want to serve God, they do not know God. Then. In the formality of the ceremony and worship, oftentimes will cause jealousy and stripes, even killing. How Cain killed Abel over the offerings in the same way for the past two thousand years? How many true followers of Christ have been persecuted or even killed under the religious ideology? These people who persecuted the ones who truly followed the Lord, they never knew the Father nor Jesus, because Jesus was sent by the Father. Verse four. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you. Jesus knew that it's about time for him to go on the cross, so he took every opportunity to tell his disciples what are about to happen. And he did not tell them these things at the beginning because it, he was with them. This beginning should be a week ago. He did, he did tell them that he would suffer and be killed in Jerusalem, but he did not say it very clearly to them. And his disciples should also did not under, understand it. At that time, Jesus was still physically with them. All persecutions from Satan all fell on Jesus. The disciples were all under Jesus' protection and didn't even understand what Jesus had to go through. But now Jesus was about to leave them, and they would no longer have his physical presence, and the attacks from Satan. Are still in existence, so they would start to to fall on them, ah,、uh, fall on the shoulders of the disciples. Therefore, now Jesus told his disciples in details of the things to come. This is for when they were persecuted, they will remember the words Jesus has spoke spoken to them. Verse five. But now I go away to Him who sent me, and none of you ask me where are you going. Now Jesus will be crucified very soon. He will die, go to the Hades, and resurrected from the dead, and then He is going to the Father. None of you ask me where are you going. Before this last week, the disciples did not ask, but after the Last Supper. After Jesus gave the new commandment of loving one another, in the last few hours, Peter did ask. In chapter thirteen, verse thirty-six, Peter asked, "Lord, where are you going?" In chapter fourteen, verse five, Thomas also asked. Just a short while after, "Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way?" Now the time is almost here for his disciples. Good, Jesus then told them again very clearly, verse six. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart, because the disciples finally did understand a little of the、uh, Lord's of the Lord's words. So they started to feel sorrow in their hearts. Jesus also felt their emotion and said. Verse seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth: it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come to you. If but if I depart, I will send him to you. When the disciples were filled with the sor- sorrow in their hearts, they could not truly understand the words. So Jesus told them clearly that it's to their advantage that he goes away, for if he does not go away, the Comforter will not come. If he departs, he will send the Comforter to them. While Jesus is in his earthly ministry, he was with his disciples physically. Jesus took the. Fresh of man, he carried out his earthly ministry, and he was limited by time and by space. 
as a man. Now he is going away. After he departs, he will send the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, to them. He comes and will in will will indwell. Indwell in the disciples. That is to change from the physical presence to invisible presence, and the Comforter will be with them forever. His presence will no longer be limited by time nor space. The Comforter's coming is Jesus's coming, just as in the First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse forty-five it says, "The last Adam became a life-giving spirit." When the Holy Spirit comes, He comes with all the riches of Jesus Christ, and He comes and indwells in the believers. That is, all the riches of Jesus Christ is indwelled in the believers today. His That life-giving spirit, through his dispensing of the life, believers can experience all the riches and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. On the one hand, the Holy Spirit was sent by the Father. He came so we may understand the Father's will and plan. On the other hand, this Holy Spirit also was sent by the Son. He comes and brings with him all Jesus is. And what he has done and what he has accomplished to us, and become our reality. Therefore, Jesus told them very strongly that it is for their advantage that he goes away. Dear brothers and sisters, we must understand that the Holy Spirit comes, and he will solidify. Solidify all the grace of God to reality in us. The provisions for us will be even more direct, and the protections for us will be even more personal, and the comfort for us will be even more timely. He is not abstract, but someone who we can experience. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you for your. Going, you went and you sent the Comforter to us、uh, to come to be with us. The Holy Spirit comes and indwells with us forever. This Holy Spirit is also the pledge of our inheritance, with what what an assurance of our salvation. Help me to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit, the protection of the Holy Spirit. Also, give me grace. So I can be mindful of the Holy Spirit, obey the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and live out a living that's pleasing to God. Praise the Lord and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.